This is Senator Adam Ollier, and it's story time. And we've got a cool one thanks to the American Reading Company. It's Baseball uh, Like You've Never Seen It by Matt Rear and Drew Falchetta. When you think about Major League Baseball, you probably think of lots of people sitting in a ballpark cheering for their favorite team. You probably picture baseball teams with players from all around the world. But baseball wasn't always this way. Major League Baseball began in 1876. Men on the Major League teams got paid to play a sport that many people played for fun in parks and backyards. Let's travel back in time and find out what events made Major League Baseball into the game we love today. The first face mask. In 1877, baseball players' uniforms included tall socks, flat top hats, and thin gloves. The shoes, called cleats, had long, sharp spikes to dig into the dirt. Catchers had one of the most dangerous jobs in baseball. They had to catch more than 100 fast pitches in each game. Until 1877, they had no way to protect their faces. This is the year they started to wear face masks. See that baseball glove? And early face masks. In school, they learned to play different sports like football, track, and baseball. Many of the boys were great players, but when they grew up, they had not been allowed to play Major League Baseball. Most baseball players had been white men. In the 1800s, many young boys from Indian nations were forced to leave their families to go to white schools. In 1897, Louis Sock Alexis joined the Cleveland Spiders. He was from the Penobscot Nation. Many white fans treated him badly. They teased him and called him names. He ignored them and won many games with his team. Lou Castro, 1902. Until 1902, most of the players in Major League Baseball had been born in the United States. Lou Castro played baseball for his school in New York, but he wasn't born in the United States. He was born in Colombia, a country more than 2,000 miles away. Men from this country and other countries in this part of the world are called Latinos. Castro was asked to join the Athletics, a major league team near New York. He became the first Latino player to play Major League Baseball. Let's see, Lou Castro, some other photos of the time. In 1905, Ben Clem was the umpire standing behind the catcher. He made sure teams followed the rules and showed good sportsmanship. He shouted calls to the players and fans. That's Bill Clem right there. All of the fans could see Bill Clem, but it was hard for everyone to hear him. He decided to use his arms to let the fans and players know what call he made. He put his arms out flat to say a player was safe. Like that, safe. Uh, he bent his arm at the elbow to say a player was out. You're out. Uh, he was the first umpire to use hand signals. Now all umpires use them. See? I'm saying out and safe. The first all-black baseball teams, the Negro Baseball League, established 1920. In 1920, there were many black baseball players, but black men couldn't play in Major League Baseball teams. Many black men started their own teams. The players were paid a lot less than white players in the Major Leagues. Black teams only played each other. This lasted for 26 years. You see? It's the Nero League. Black players playing by themselves. Jackie Mitchell strikes out Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth played for the Yankees, and he was one of the most popular players in the game. Many of his biggest fans called him the Great Bambino. He was a great hitter, which is why other fans called him the King of Crash and the Sultan of Swat. So what happened on a day in 1931 when a 17-year-old girl was the pitcher? Jackie Mitchell played for the Lookouts, a minor league team. Minor league teams have players that could become major league players someday. Mitchell was only the second woman to play on a minor league team. Some people say women were only allowed to play baseball because team owners wanted to sell more tickets. In one game, the Lookouts played Babe Ruth's team. When Ruth stepped up to bat, Mitchell threw some of her best pitches. Ball one, strike one. Strike two, strike three, you're out. Soon, rule makers decided that baseball was too tough for girls. They would not let Mitchell play in the major leagues anymore. Let me see, that's Babe Ruth, that's Jackie Mitchell, striking Babe Ruth out, arguably one of the greatest hitters of all time. The first game on TV. Until 1939, if you wanted to see a baseball game, you had to go to a game. If you couldn't travel to the game, you could listen to the game on the radio. If you didn't have a radio, you could read about the game in the newspaper the next day. See, here's the newspaper. 
That all changed in 1939 when the Reds and the Dodgers played the first baseball game to be on TV. Lots of people met in homes and at a TV stores to watch the game. The team owners worried that this might stop people from going to the game in person, but they were wrong. First Women's League. In 1943, many countries were fighting World War II. Many U.S. men, including Major League Baseball players, were forced to go and fight. Team owners worried that there wouldn't be enough men left to play baseball. They wondered if fans would pay to watch women play baseball. Let us play ball. The fans loved it. There were four women's teams. They played in front of large crowds from 1943 to 54. When the soldiers came back home, women's baseball ended. You see these? See women's teams? Jackie Robinson. By 1945, black players still had only been allowed to play for all black teams. Many people were angry that black men had fought for their country in World War II, but had not been allowed to play Major League Baseball. Branch Rickey was the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, a major league team in New York City. He wanted to add one black player to his all-white team. He picked Jackie Robinson. Robinson played for the Dodgers minor league team, the Montreal Royals, for a couple of years. There's Jackie Robinson. These are the Red Tails, the 332nd fighter pilots of the United States Air Force. That's who people call the Tuskegee Airmen. <clears throat> in 1947, Jackie Robinson played in his first Major League Baseball game for the Dodgers. Some fans cheered for him. Some fans shouted hurtful things to him. Some people even sent hate mail to his house, saying they were going to hurt him. He promised his team that he wouldn't respond to these men's words. More and more people grew to respect and love Robinson. At the end of his first year, he won the first ever Rookie of the Year award. He is known in the Baseball Hall of Fame. See, there's Jackie Robinson. There's his Rookie of the Year. <clears throat> first Western team. For a long time, all the baseball teams played here in the East. See? That changed in 1958. The Brooklyn Dodgers moved across the country to the West. This made it possible for many more people to watch baseball and become fans of the game. Masanori Murakami. In 1964, this young man was a student in Japan. His name was Masanori Murakami. He was sent to the U.S. to study and practice with some baseball teams. He was a really good player, and managers wanted to move him to a major league team. He became the first Japanese baseball player to play in the major league. When his team back in Japan saw how successful he had become, they wanted him to come back and play for a Japanese baseball team. The U.S. and Japan argued over him. He agreed to play one more year in the U.S. before going back to Japan for good. No one from Japan played Major League Baseball in the U.S. for almost 30 years. See him? He's playing for the San Francisco Giants. 1964. And there's Japan and his team. The longest baseball strike. The amount of money a player makes is called a salary. Teams pay players high salaries to keep them from quitting and joining other teams. In 1994, the team owners said they were going to stop letting the salaries get bigger. The players refused to play. This is called a strike. The players went on strike for the rest of the year's games. The strike lasted for 232 days and there were no World Series game that year. Baseball lost many fans because of this. Let's see, stadium strike, stadium close, players on strike. David Denson. In 2015, David Simpson was a first baseman for the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers, a minor league team. The best players from this team are picked to play for a major league team called the Milwaukee Brewers. He told his teammates that he is gay. This is called coming out. This made him the first out baseball player to play in the minor leagues. In the history of major league baseball, there has never been an out player. Also in 2015, Jessica Mendoza became the first woman to broadcast a World Series game from inside the broadcast booth a job only men had ever done. Many fans were mad and they said hateful things. They thought of baseball as a man's game. Mendoza knows the game well. She was an amazing softball player in college. She played for the US softball team and she helped her softball team win the gold medal at the 2004 Olympics. Most fans were proud of her success. They think baseball is a sport for everyone. See Denson and Miss Mendoza. These first made baseball better. Now men of all races play Major League Baseball together. There are women sportscasters, but women haven't played on Major League Baseball teams since 1954. Baseball keeps changing to include more people. Who knows who the next first in baseball will be? Maybe it'll be you. Uh, timeline of baseball's first. 1876, Major League Baseball established. The first catcher's mass, 1877. 
1897, Louis Sokalexis joins the Cleveland Spiders. Lou Castro joins the Philadelphia Athletics, 1902. Bill Clem starts using hand signals, 1905. Negro Baseball League established, 1920. Jackie Mitchell strikes out Babe Ruth, 1931. The first baseball game airs on TV, 1939. All-American Girls Professional Baseball League established, 1943. Jackie Robinson joins the Brooklyn Dodgers, 1947. Uh, Masanori Murakami joins the San Francisco Giants, 1964. The Longest Baseball Strike, 1994. Uh, and in 2015, David Denson became the first openly gay player, and Jessica Mendoza becomes the first female ESPN broadcaster for the World Series. And that's Baseball Like You've Never Seen It by Matt Rear and Drew Falchetta.